AI generation of you, a candidate, a CEO, a politician, a news anchor, saying anything I want. And that is a, a major success for the AI community and terrifying for people like me. I am Hani Farid. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and computer sciences and the School of Information here at UC Berkeley. I specialize in digital media forensics, and this is Academic Review, Political Deepfakes. So deepfakes, of course, are AI-generated, machine-powered <laughs> generation of images, audio, and video. Let's make America great again. And today, you can go to a do dozen different services and type nothing more than young Americans walking happily in a parade, patriotic holding signs that say Harris Walls 2024, wait five seconds, and an image like that will pop up. And that is incredible. So first of all, the text is coherent. The flag in the background is coherent. The reflections on the glasses are beautiful. The woman looks like a real person. You are limited by almost nothing other than your imagination. And that is a, a major success for the AI community and terrifying for people like me. With as little as 20 seconds or so, I can clone a person's voice. And by that, what I mean is I upload 20 seconds of your voice, my voice, or your voice, and uh, it clones it, and then I type, and I can get you to say anything I want. So let me give you an example of this. This, I'm gonna let you listen to the original voice of Mayor Khan, he's the mayor of London, and I'm gonna use this example because somebody created a fake audio of him that eventually led to riots in the street, and I wanted to make a point of how impactful these types of deep fakes are. So go ahead and listen to the real one first. But I think this takes the biscuit. It's just such bad taste. It just reminds everyone. Okay, so that is Mayor Khan with the British accent, by the way. I uploaded 20 seconds of him talking from a YouTube interview, and then I got him to say this. I am told that on the issue of deep fakes, one of the world's leading experts is Professor Hani Farid. Uh, Having spent some time with him, however, I can tell you that he is a bit of a dipshit. <laughs> that is the problem of asking your students to do things for you. But also, the point of that is, I don't mean to offend, but it's to say, I can get him to say anything I want. So on the image and audio front, the content is more or less moving through the uncanny valley. That is, it's becoming so realistic that the average person can no longer distinguish it from reality. I would say video is lagging a little bit behind because it's a little bit harder. You gotta create 24 to 30 frames a second. You gotta get the audio right but it is not far behind. But you can imagine I have a lot of questions. So um, I'd love to begin with you firstly, just because I, I read that you started out in advertising and now you run a wellness business. So this is a full blown video deep fake and all it had as input was that little image you see on the left, a single image of the person, one. An audio track, either real or fake, doesn't matter. And then it literally made that person's head moving with the eye blinking and the throat muscles moving and the expressions fully AI generated. This is a technology that Microsoft has created. They have not released it yet, but it is coming. AI generation of you, a candidate, a CEO, a politician, a news anchor saying anything I want. And then of course, I upload that to X, I upload that to YouTube, I upload it to TikTok, and suddenly the world around us starts to get very, very messy and very, very complicated. We are absolutely uh, at a time, at a year in fact, where some two billion people worldwide are voting, you are seeing deep fakes play a role in our elections in a couple of different ways. In some ways, fake endorsements, in other ways where people are creating videos of candidates saying things that they never did to harm them, and another way is taking real content and saying that it's fake because you don't like what it depicts and just muddying the waters of what's real and what is fake. So it's the polluting of the information ecosystem, trying to harm candidates, trying to help your candidates by painting them in a, in a better light, and then trying to deny the things that are simply inconvenient to you as a candidate or a campaign. So this is an image here uh, that made the rounds shortly after Harris Walls announced that they were at the top of the ticket for the national election. And as soon as this photo was released, within minutes, people online started claiming it was fake. Why were they saying it's fake? And here there were some legitimate questions about the photo. So if you look at the photo over here, you'll see three areas that I've cir circled. One is the guy, you see this illumination pattern on both sides of the head, and that looks a little odd. It looks like almost there's a halo around him. If you go straight up from that, you see these two phones that seem to be mashed together, and that looks like a classic generative AI artifact where it doesn't know how to create a phone properly. And then on the left there, it looks like you see the halo of a woman, and it looks like the guy's arm is going through her head because that halo goes right through his arm. And that, 
that looks really strange. What you should know about images is that when they start circulating online, they tend to get degraded in terms of quality and resolution. It's very hard to reason about images when you have these low quality images. So what I'm showing you here, which I hope you can see, is a higher resolution version of it. And here you see two really interesting things. First of all, the phones have very clear delineation between them. You also see something that I just love, which is the guy in the back has a white and black bracelet that when I made the image lower resolution just blurred into, as it turns out, the perfect contour of the head. The lights are the lights. And what you can see there is that the people that are in shadow are being illuminated by the lights in the hangar, which just so happen to be on both sides of them. When you illuminate from both sides, you get this haloing effect. And so at this point I thought, you know, I don't think there's a lot going on here. But then former President Trump himself said, this photo is fake. And he said it on social media. And he pointed, because somebody pointed him to it, I'm sure, that you cannot see the reflection of the crowd in the engine of Air Force Two. And when I looked at that, I thought, well, first of all, that's a pretty low resolution image. I'm not sure I should see the reflection, but you know, you don't want to leave a, st a stone unturned. So what I did is I went into a 3D rendering engine. And what you're seeing here is a mirrored cylinder. That's the engine. You're seeing this big crowd in red, and then you're seeing a camera at the end. And now the question you want to ask yourself is if I render that scene through the camera viewpoint, what do I see? And on the top you see, well, what you sort of see in the image. Big sea of crowd and then just the engine there. And in the lower right you see a, a zoomed in version of the engine where that tiny little sliver of red is the reflection of the crowd in the engine. When you have a convex surface that bulges out like this, things that are above and below get amplified in the reflection and things that are directly in the middle get compressed. So there is nothing in this photo to suggest that it's fake. Why fight this, right? So we're talking about deep fakes in the area of politics. And you could say, well, it's pettiness. I don't want her crowds to be larger than my crowds. And that may be one reason, and I'm sure that's part of it. But I think there's something more nefarious at play. Come November, if you want to deny the outcome of an election, which former President Trump has said he will do, well, a good way to start is to claim that they have to fake the number of people at their rallies, and therefore there's no way she got that many of votes in November. This is another example. It shows two images of former President Trump. This is a pur purportedly taken when he was doing the interview with Elon Musk on X. The reason I'm showing this is for two reasons. One is I was contacted by a large news outlet. They had run this through some analyses that had suggested that maybe it was AI generated. I analyzed it with a number of techniques that I won't get into here. I found no evidence of manipulation. But this also gives me the opportunity to show you a really cool analysis that we can do. So Trump is looking at his phone, and phones are flat surfaces. And generally speaking, when you take an image of something in the world, you lose information because it's a three-dimensional world, and you're slapping it down onto a two-dimensional plane. But a two-dimensional surface, the surface of a phone, when it's mirrored into a two-dimensional plane, there's no loss of information. So here what you're seeing is what's called a perspective cor correction or viewpoint correction, where I ask, what would the scene look like, the phone, if I was directly on top of it? And there's a beautiful, simple mathematical transformation called the homography that allows me to modify that image, geometrically correct, to take the viewpoint of directly above. And when you do that, you can almost read the text and you can see the image of Trump. You can see the image of Musk. You can see the alignment that that looks exactly like a Twitter screen. And the reason why this is useful in a forensic analysis is that generative AI has a really hard time with these details. And when you find evidence like this that suggests that there, it's a coherent image, you're in pretty good shape to say that the image is real. Example number three, uh, this was a montage that uh, Trump uh, retweeted. Purportedly shows a bunch of young women wearing shirts that say Swifties for Trump. This is a really interesting example because immediately you know that the bottom left image is not real. That's obviously meant to be a, an artistic rendering. So on the top left there, there's a montage of six very small images that are a little bit too small to really forensic analyze. So when you get images that small, you should be very careful because when they're that few pixels, it's hard to say anything definitive. And this one, you know, when you look at it, first of all, all the women look the same. That's usually a good sign that something has gone a little uh, funny. But if you also look in the background, the flags make no sense at all. That image almost looks too perfect, too saturated, uh, too, like everything just put together just right. This looks like the kind of photo you would expect some guy in the background dangling his legs on, on, the, on the wall. So in this image, uh, there's a couple things that we can do. Um, so one is along the background here, you see the building. 
here's what you know again about planar surfaces um, that have parallel lines on them, is that if I take an image of that, those lines have to converge to what's called a vanishing point. And we've known about this since Renaissance painting. So here what I've done is I've annotated five lines along parallel lines on flat surfaces in the background, and you can see that they perfectly converge to a single vanishing point. Does that prove it's real? No, but here's what I can tell you. More often than not, when you have an AI-generated image, those vanishing geometries are not satisfied. It doesn't know about geometry because fundamentally it's a statistical inference engine. And so when you find this consistency, along with other artifacts which I won't get into, we have pretty good reason to believe that this is a real photo. And so what's particularly clever about this montage, and I started to see this recently, is you know, it's really easy to just slap down a bunch of fake images. But a smarter thing to do is to create a hybrid, few real, few fake, and now it starts to muddy the waters a little bit and it makes it hard to figure out what's going on. This is a weird example, and normally I wouldn't want to share with you an image of Hitler, but I like this analysis because it shows you something really cool. So this, of course, is the now iconic photo of Trump after the assassination attempt. And somebody started circulating this other image that seemed to be somehow that miraculously Trump and two Secret Service agents were reconstructing some historical photo showing um, Hitler. And so when we analyzed this photo, we found a really interesting pattern which is that all images have some amount of what we call noise, imperfections in them. And we have some simple techniques that can pull those imperfections or noise patterns out, and that's what you're seeing here. And you don't have to know a lot to know that something is wrong with this image. There are two very distinct noise patterns here, one in the background, showing Hitler in the background, and then one of the flag, and then the two other characters in this photo. And you can see what somebody did is they created a composite. And by the way, this isn't AI. This is Photoshop. And so this is a simple photo composite where somebody composited stuff. They added a bunch of noise, imperfections, to try to blend it in together, but they did a bad job of it. The little bit of online searching, you can find the original photos. On a daily basis, I analyze images, audio, and video. Nine months ago, I was pretty good at it. I could just look at stuff and I knew almost immediately. I'd still run all the tools and all the analysis and all the things that I showed you. I would say today that's gotten a lot harder. Um, on a daily basis, there's at least one piece of content where I'm not sure just looking at it. And I'm pretty good at what I do. And I do this for a living and I've been doing it for 25 years. I'm sorry for the world you've inherited because if it's this hard for me, it's way, way harder for you. So here's what I'm gonna tell you is you gotta slow down because there's two parts of the problem of disinformation. There's the creators and there's the spreaders. And for those of you that are retweeting and resharing and liking, you're part of the problem. We all have a responsibility to create a healthier online information ecosystem. And that means stop getting your information from social media. But if you must, get more careful about what you are sharing and retweeting and commenting on because you are being lied to, you are being manipulated, um, and you're being made a fool and that should make you angry. And we can do better and I think we have to do better, not just for us as individuals, but for our very democracy.